Good Friday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. In today's weather forecast, we'll be covering the tornado outbreak likely with intense tornadoes, damaging wind, and large hail across the lower Mississippi Valley and the Mid-South today. And a winter storm is likely from the Midwest into the Great Lakes and even southeastern Canada on Saturday into Sunday. And then our next big storm system moving in next week with more heavy rain for the West Coast and then a potential another severe weather outbreak into the middle of the country by the end of next week. If you guys are not yet subscribed to the YouTube channel, now is the time to press the subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on all of my daily weather forecast updates each and every morning at 9 a.m. on this channel. I cover southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics during tropical weather season. So hit the subscribe button down below, everyone. Definitely appreciate it. Also, don't forget to press the like button down below, the thumbs up button. It helps to get all of this information out to as many people as possible across the platform. So I do appreciate all of the likes out there. But going into today, we have a tornado outbreak that is still on track across the Mid-South and the lower Mississippi Valley, as well as some flash flooding across the Ohio River Valley, and then a, a winter storm starting to take shape across the western Great Lakes into the central Great Lakes as we go in towards tonight. So looking first at the warm side of the system, the severe weather, we have a fairly significant trough starting to take more of a negative tilt as we go into this afternoon and this evening. And as that do does start to take a negative tilt, we're going to see some very strong winds in the mid-levels of the atmosphere, and that is going to open up the chance for some strong tornadoes. So we do have a tornado outbreak still on track today here across the Mid-South and the lower Mississippi Valley. If you are in the orange or the red here, an enhanced to moderate risk of severe weather, I want you to be weather aware today. And even if you're in the dark green and yellow, you still want to be weather aware for severe weather. So if you live in Memphis, Tennessee, Jackson, Mississippi, down here to Vicksburg and Natchez, up there toward Greenville, Mississippi, the Pine Bluff area, and Arkansas down in toward the Monroe, Louisiana area. In that moderate risk, I want you guys to be on the highest of alert today for severe weather. The reason being, we have strong, violent, and long track tornadoes possible today. The Storm Prediction Center has outlined the threat for EF3 or stronger tornadoes going into this afternoon and this evening here, and this may even persist into the overnight hours. So that means if you or live in eastern and central Arkansas, northern Louisiana, much of Mississippi here, getting into western Tennessee, extreme southeastern Missouri, and western portions of Kentucky. I want you to be on high alert for strong, violent, and long track tornadoes later on today. Even a tornado threat extends all the way up into the Ohio River Valley here towards the Cincinnati region and Louisville, Kentucky as we get through later on today. Looking at a sounding here of the Arklamis region, so Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi tri-state area uh, Friday evening. This is this evening. It does still show a PDS tornado tag here with a sickle shaped hodograph. That means there is a lot of turning of the winds uh, with height and speed shear as well. So these tornadoes could be very intense later on today. In addition to the tornado threat, we have widespread damaging winds that could be in excess of 75 miles per hour here across the mid south. So we're talking about you in western Tennessee, northwestern Mississippi, eastern portions of Arkansas in extreme southeastern Missouri in those areas with a hatched 30% chance of significant winds over 75 miles per hour. Otherwise, 60 to 70 mile per hour winds outside of that here across much of the southeast. And then as we go into the large hail probability, there's a lower chance for hail, but still a quarter size hail to up to golf ball size hail with these storms are possible, especially in this yellow shaded color here across the Arklatex and the Arklamis region later on today. So timing the storms out across the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Late this morning into the afternoon hours, some of these storms could be severe with damaging winds, large hail, and of course some heavy rainfall. We could also see some severe warnings up here toward portions of northern and central Arkansas into western Tennessee. These likely will be producing some damaging winds and large hail if they do go severe. However, a brief spin-up tornado or two is possible at noon today. By the time we get into late afternoon now, 4, 5, 6 o'clock, this entire cold front will be pushing east. And when ahead of the cold front, ahead of the main line of storms, we really have to watch out for these isolated, very discreet supercells. These could be the ones to pose the risk for violent, long-track tornadoes, those EF3 or stronger type of tornadoes here in the tri-state area there 
to southeastern Arkansas, northeastern Louisiana, and to west central Mississippi. Those are the areas to watch by 6 o'clock. Otherwise, widespread damaging winds through the Pine Bluff area, Little Rock on up toward Jonesboro, Arkansas by 6 o'clock this evening. That'll push across Middle Tennessee, so Nashville down here into Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, and the northern and northwestern portions of Alabama. Back through the Jackson, Mississippi region through this evening toward the midnight time frame. That continues to move quickly off to the east. And by 6 o'clock on Saturday morning, that entire line will be into western Virginia, the western Carolinas, much of central Georgia through the Atlanta metro area. And it will be on a significant weakening trend by then as well. But as we go into Saturday, this whole system pushes east. We have the warm sector all across the southeastern United States. The cold front back to the west here, and we have fairly strong mid-level jet here across the southeast as well, supporting more damaging winds and large hail, at least across parts of South Carolina into Georgia, southeastern Alabama, and to northwest Florida here. That is tomorrow on Saturday, March 25th, and there also is a chance, a lower end chance, but still a chance nonetheless of tornadoes across southern Georgia, extreme northwest Florida, into southeastern Alabama here. So a couple of spin-up tornadoes are possible in addition to the damaging winds and large hail on Saturday across parts of the southeast. Looking here at 7 a.m. on Saturday, we got that remnant line continuing. This is the continuation of that big system here today across portions of the Arquitex region and the Mid-South. That will continue to push across the Carolinas, Georgia, southeastern Alabama, northwest Florida. That's at 7 a.m. on Saturday. That'll get closer to the coast here, so Myrtle Beach down towards Charleston, South Carolina here the outer banks of North Carolina down through the Savannah Georgia region could have some stronger storms potentially approaching you by midday on Saturday then as we go into Saturday evening we're going to get this cold front off the coast and finally say goodbye to our multi-day severe weather outbreak across the deep south here on Saturday evening but we do have to talk about the flash flooding risk as well we have widespread flood watches here several flash flood warnings here and aerial flood warnings where we have a lot of flooding going on a lot of heavy rain has been ongoing overnight and now going into Friday morning here and it does look like we're going to be adding up even more rainfall on top of what we've already seen some of these areas will see an additional two to four inches of rain especially if you're in the purple and red shaded colors here across north central Arkansas western Tennessee southeastern Missouri here southern Illinois west central Kentucky and and even southern portions of Indiana, otherwise a widespread area of at least an inch of rain in these blue shaded colors. That's up into Indiana, Ohio, West Virginia here and getting into western portions of PA into Pennsylvania through Saturday morning. That is a concern for flash flooding. There is a slight to even moderate risk for flash flooding here across the Ohio River Valley, getting down into the Mid-South here as we go through that Friday time frame today and into Saturday on March 25th. Then on the northern side of the system, and again, we have a three-prong uh, three threat here. We got the severe weather to the south. In between, we got the flash flooding. And then to the north, we got a winter storm brewing here on Saturday morning. This is the low-level temperatures, and you see we'll be mixing down some colder temperatures here in the low levels, just about one to 2,000 feet above our heads here. But then as we go outside to feel the real air temperature, this is near the surface, temperatures will be in the upper 20s and lower 30s here. So just marginal for snowfall to form here, and it will be a wet snowfall. We'll be seeing that across the Chicagoland area, Milwaukee, Rockford, Illinois, and then up here into northern lower Michigan by 6 a.m. on Saturday. That spreads more across Lake of Michigan here in northern Indiana, still snowing in Milwaukee, Chicago, Green Bay at noon here on Saturday. That pushes across into portions of Ontario here Saturday afternoon. Then by Saturday evening, it's going to be approaching parts of uh, um, northern New England. So we're talking about upstate New York, northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, western Maine, and a lot of that snow shield is across Quebec and Ontario, Canada by 6 o'clock on Saturday evening. Looking at the total snowfall accumulation, this is from Saturday into Sunday, widespread three to six inch snowfall amounts, especially the highest of the amounts up to near six inches across northern lower Michigan up into the UP of Michigan, maybe a few inches here or back into the Green Bay, Milwaukee areas. This will mainly be on grassy surfaces. However, we still will have some heavier snowfall rates that could overcome the warm ground. So we still could be seeing those slushy accumulations here from say Madison, Wisconsin towards Green Bay, Milwaukee. 
Milwaukee, Racine, Kenosha, Wisconsin, and then getting into northern lower Michigan as well. That will continue across the northeast, maybe an inch or two of snow here into western Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, and upstate New York. That is the same on Saturday into Sunday here this weekend. Then across the Pacific Northwest, more moisture across these areas. We're going to be ringing it out with some heavy snow as well. So parts of western Washington State, western Oregon here, in the higher elevations, we'll be seeing one to two foot snowfall amounts there. Also some one to two foot snowfall amounts into central Idaho, southern Montana here, getting into northwestern Wyoming and around the Salt Lake City areas. As you go up into elevation, especially here from Salt Lake City up above uh, the ground level there here going up in elevation, we could be seeing over two feet of snow Saturday into Sunday in those areas as well. Then going into Sunday, we have that stalled out frontal boundary across the Gulf Coast in the southeast here on Sunday. That is also going to be ringing out a lot of heavy rainfall with it as well. But look at the dew points, 60s and 70s down here, and that will support CAPE or a lot of energy, convective available potential energy on Sunday along and south of that boundary. That'll be adding up to around 1,000 to 2,000 joules per kilo Kilogram, and that is quite a bit here for thunderstorms. So that is another area for severe weather on Sunday. This time for eastern portions of Louisiana, South Central Mississippi, South Central Alabama, and to South Central Georgia as well. That's just a marginal risk, but I do think this will be mainly for damaging winds and large hail. However, a couple of brief tornadoes are possible across these areas going into Sunday afternoon. So timing this out, our first round of storms, these could be producing maybe some strong gusty winds, but mainly heavy rain by Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We'll have a little break in the action during the early to mid-afternoon hours. We'll heat up the atmosphere. We'll destabilize with maybe Maybe some breaks of sun and then our second round coming in by mid to late evening into the midnight time frame here going into early Monday morning. This will be the round to produce some damaging winds, large hail, and perhaps a couple of brief tornadoes across the Gulf Coast states getting in towards late Sunday evening. That'll push farther to the east into South Carolina, coastal Georgia, so Myrtle Beach, Charleston, down there towards Savannah, Georgia. Maybe even as far south as Jacksonville, Florida, we'll see some storms by 7 a.m. the morning commute on Monday, so definitely be on the lookout for that. But as we go into Monday, across the rest of the country, more of a zonal flow. You see the jet stream is kind of flattened out here. We're waiting on our next significant storm system that is just off the west coast on Monday. And you can see with the zonal flow, with the flattening of the jet stream, um, it, you take it or leave it. You have the 70s and 80s farther to the south, even widespread low 90s into central and southern Florida down here. Hot temperatures on Monday. And then to the north of the jet stream, we have the colder temperatures. So 20s, 30s, 40s, all across the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, and the Northeast on Monday. But that system that I was talking about will start to deepen on Tuesday as it approaches northern and central California on Tuesday the 28th and Wednesday across southern California in the desert southwest here as we get into the middle of next week on Wednesday, March 29th. And you can see this will be spreading more heavy rain, more heavy snow, especially for the Sierra Nevadas again that have been absolutely crushed by snowfall this season. We'll see another bout of very heavy snow on Tuesday the 28th and Wednesday the 29th. And this will work across portions of the Rockies by then, producing more heavy snow for Idaho, Wyoming, uh, the Salt Lake City area, and across portions of Utah, getting down here just outside of the Las Vegas region by the middle of next week. Looking at this, total rainfall accumulation Monday into Tuesday next week on the 27th and 28th. Northern California, especially near the coastline there, we're going to be seeing those 1 to 2 inch rainfall amounts on Monday into Tuesday. Then that will work down the Sacramento Valley and coastal California here into central California and eventually southern California by the middle of next week on Tuesday, March 28th and Wednesday, March 29th. We'll also be seeing some flash flooding conditions Concerns. We've had a lot of rain in California recently. We're going to see more heavy rain, so that will start to exacerbate the problems here, and we'll start to see more flash flooding across California with a marginal, even a slight risk near the coastal regions there of California early on next week. 
And that system will continue to push farther east on Thursday, late next week, on the 30th, before ejecting across the middle of the country on Friday, March 31st, to end the month. And the end the month of March, it's going to end very, very wild here, it looks like. We have another big system moving in with temperatures warming up into the 60s, 70s, and perhaps the 80s down into central and south central Texas near the Rio Grande Valley on Thursday. Plenty of moisture out of the Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf of Mexico is boiling right now, so do points will be in the 60s down here across the central southern plains on Thursday and already the storm prediction center has issued a day seven a very rare day seven slight risk for severe storms across southern southeastern Kansas central Oklahoma down into north central Texas here this does include the Wichita regions down into Tulsa, Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, El Reno, Moore, um, Oklahoma there, the Norman area, Lawton, Fort Sill, Wichita Falls, Dallas, Fort Worth, Abilene, Texas. A lot of those areas will be under the risk on Thursday. They did also note that this could expand and also change a little bit here in the coming days since it is seven days out. So we'll continue to watch that. But looking at Thursday, maybe more tornadoes, more damaging winds, large hail here, and of course the heavy rainfall threat that comes along with these storms. Again, you see more of a discrete nature at least on the model here so that does indicate maybe more tornado potential potentially going into Thursday and then Friday the system pushes slowly to the east that deep warm sector we could be seeing dew points into the 50s and 60s all the way north into eastern Iowa northern Illinois into northern and central Indiana now on Friday March 31st to end the month and the Colorado State machine learning here um, outlook does show potentially maybe a marginal to slight risk threat on Friday at least to end the month, at least across the Arquitex again and parts of the Ohio Valley. So we will be watching this threat unfolding later on next week with all modes of severe weather likely by the time we get into Friday. And again, maybe a squall line starting to develop across the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, Texarkana, Little Rock, and then on up toward the Illinois Valley here by the time we get towards next Friday. Farther to the north does look like again another winter storm the models do differ on the strength here and the positioning of the system just a little bit the european model is showing a decent swath of about three to six inches of snow across northern and central minnesota back into the eastern dakotas the gfs model a little slower a little farther west and more bullish with the snowfall amounts here with over a foot of snow back into the dakotas northwestern nebraska and into western portions of minnesota getting in towards the late next week we'll continue to track it guys a very active weather pattern over the next week or so so continue to stick around here thanks for watching definitely appreciate it remember to like the video give it a thumbs up down below leave any comments questions and concerns below i'll get to those later on today subscribe to the youtube channel if you're new and hit the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel have a very safe rest of your friday everybody and again be safe out there if you live in the southern plains um, portions of the arquitex and also the deep south i want you guys to be weather aware through the day today have a great weekend everybody and i will see you all in the next video.